move beyond the simple demonstration of prototype systems to the demonstration of full-scale programs. This was the case in a recent joint venture with the Advanced Technology Center at Loma Linda University Hospital. Dave Warner, who's one of the leading VR researchers, virtual reality researchers at Loma Linda University, um, heard about what we were doing with performance animation and uh, he was really excited about it. He was hoping some way his school can eventually get a technology like this and see how it would help. And I said to Dave, I got a perfect opportunity. Tice's idea was to create a real-time system that would enable doctors and other hospital staff to interact with children through an animated cartoon character. Warner's interest in the project was immediate. Pediatric psychiatry. Um, Right now they're using finger puppets and other things. So we think behavioral medicine, pediatric behavioral medicine could benefit, and probably even adolescent and, and adult psychiatry could benefit from this because you can put someone into an environment where they will let go of other things. I mean, they're, they're, they're here talking to puppets. Well, if you could do this sort of technology, we could probably penetrate much farther. From the beginning, Tice and Warner knew they wanted to create a full-blown demonstration rather than a simple print and video presentation. People in management position are very concrete and you can describe this, you can wave your hands all day long, you can even show them videos and they don't get it. They don't see it. And here, our Advanced Technology Center, we have a motto, lead by example. I mean, it's one thing to go out and tell people what to do, but it's another thing to actually show them how a successful run would be and that's kind of what we're focusing on. To get the demonstration off the ground, Warner first had to secure hospital approval for the project. He began the effort of trying to get the Loma Linda University Medical Hospital signed up to this and they went right up to the top to the Chancellor and uh, we had meetings over there and showed them videos. We brought our comedian out there who was going to drive the character. And finally uh, we got approval to, to go ahead with this thing and it started gelling into what it should be and we brought a teacher, a local teacher, to write the, uh, the uh, curriculum and we decided to teach at least some subset of the kinds of ed coursework that they would teach fifth graders. And we uh, finalized on human anatomy. And then we uh, started developing the idea of what kind of character it should be. And uh, Mark Sorrell and Associates, uh, is a, a consultant of ours, came up with a character that he can uh, basically build an extendable nose so we can use that as sort of a pointer. Once the content and creative elements of the demonstration were finalized, Warner and Tice were ready for the show. Board initialized. They assembled various groups of children, as well as hospital staff, visiting administrators, and reporters. It should be telling me what those numbers are. Because of limited funds, they were unable to set up and test their equipment until just before the event. This caused a good deal of apprehension and ultimately a few minor problems. Let's go. Have you ready, Mr. Egorda? Let's do a little stretching, okay? Yeah, right now, come on. Get Biggest ready? problems are really audio. To really pick up what kids are saying and have the same interaction that a live teacher would have, that can, you know, hear and, and you know, can interact more. So the, the challenge there becomes technical in the audio sense and, and also when we deliver the audio, in other words, the sound that the act the character is making, that it sounds natural and not booming and uh, and just trying to make it as as uh, as comfortable for the students as possible it was the, was the goal in setting the equipment up. I think we achieved some of that. Whoa! Look out! Hey, here we go, right in the cells. I'm going to give you over to a, a friend of mine. Over there, right there. Yeah, there you go. This is Eduardo. Hello. Hello. 
one of the parts of the program was sending the image of uh, Eduardo up to specific rooms where patients were uh, too disabled to move around. We just call the kid up on the phone, or the patient on the phone, and say, hi, this is Eduardo speaking, and there we solve a lot of our audio problems because he's talking on the phone. Anybody going to say anything about this? Who's the smartest person in this class? So, what did you think of the character turning into all those shapes? Very interesting. Dave, can I ask you, your class some questions? Go for it. The one, would you like to see the actor that's doing this? Yes! I thought you may want to do Very that. Good. By the end of the demonstration, both the hospital staff and the visitors present were tremendously excited about the potential of virtual reality and the applications they had just seen. For Tyson Warner, the day ended with a more subdued combination of pride, optimism, and relief. <laughs> Thank God it worked. Um, and, and it's a success. This is high risk, and that's why a lot of people don't try it. It's high risk. I think it worked well. It seems that the kids uh, liked it, but they have very little to compare it to. This is the first time they've uh, interacted with a TV cartoon character. One thing we need to be careful is not to try to do something with this technology that it wasn't made to do. We need to identify its strengths and play on those, and, and not to replace teachers, but to augment them. And that's really the point. You don't want to take people out of the loop.